So the next build that I kind of want to talk about with you guys is going to be the Bushwhacker. Uh, the Bushwhacker is a plane that's going to be my 3D trainer. Uh, it's uh, one of those things that it's a super easy build. It's a, it's a five or six year old design. Uh, it's something that I'd never adventured into before as far as 3D flying goes. Um, I never really had the plane with the ability to do so or the skill set. So the Bushwhacker is going to be something that's going to take me into that direction. Uh, kind of broaden my horizons as a pilot, that kind of stuff. Uh, kind of give you an idea of what I played around with with the Bushwhacker. If you take a look at it, you see it looks a little bit different as far as the profile goes. Kind of has that uh, uh, storchy sort of sort of look to it. Um, what I kind of played around with, with on this one is that a lot of uh, people that uh, have flown the Bushwhacker before have told me or have said in their videos that um, the Bushwhacker doesn't like to do inverted very well. So I did want to make a couple changes. I like doing inverted. It's one of my things. Anyway, um, one of the things that I, I decided that on the Bushwhacker with the design itself, the reason being that it probably didn't do inverted very well is that the horizontal stabilizer was sitting in a lot of dirty air um, being upside down and the high wing design. There was a lot of dirty air there, so it didn't have a lot of you know control authority, that kind of stuff, pitch authority, that kind of thing. Um, just for the fact that it's just sitting in all that dirty air, right? So what I wanted to play around with and some of the other planes that I've, I've done and stuff like that, a lot, especially a lot of the low wing planes, I find are really good at doing inverted just because that horizontal stabilizer has its own clean air to run through. So I, I kind of wanted to bring the, uh, if you take a look, I brought the horizontal stabilizer up to the top of the fuselage, which uh, took a little bit of figuring. I, I didn't really know how to do it or anything like that. Um, I was kind of looking at the plans and, and, and in looking at it, you can't see really the bigger picture yet until you actually get into it. But uh, the horizontal stabilizer usually is located right in the middle of the fuselage. And then the high wing, once you have it upside down, of course, inverted, everything's tilted down. You got the high wing there. The high wing is creating a lot of dirty air back towards the tail, right? So with this here, because the uh, horizontal stabilizer now is up at the top, um, it'll actually, when it's upside down, it'll fall down. You give it, uh, you know, your, your, your down elevator kind of thing. It'll actually hold itself there a lot better because it's running through its own clean air kind of idea as opposed to being in line with the wing which is the theory, it's the principle. Um, I'm not sure how the aerodynamics are actually gonna work out, but that's kind of what I was hoping for. And in doing that, I was able, actually able to lighten up the tail as well. Uh, because it had that low slung belly in the tail right there, it was curved, I kind of cut that out. Uh, so I saved some weight on, on, on that direction as well. You'll notice I didn't mount the servos into the tail as either on the, on the external side of it. I actually did mount them to the inside so if you take a look right inside right there, you'll see the two servos on either side. I do have push rods going back. These push rods here are actually the same push rods that I used on my baby blender. So uh, those are actually being able to reuse. I didn't have to uh, cut them, adjust them, bend them or anything like that. I was able to reuse those. So a little bit of the spirit of the baby blender, which is one of my longest surviving planes, is now in the bushwhacker and we'll see how that mojo works out. So uh, given that, what I did do as well, uh, given that it's only one layer of uh, foam up in the nose here and stuff like that, as I did French in some uh, barbecue skewers in there. Same thing, uh, I did. I do have a battery hatch sitting there. I kind of opened it up a little bit and make it more easily accessible to the battery. Um, so I'm going to be taking the wing on and off a lot. Uh, so I did end up Frenching in some barbecue skewers right there. Same thing with the bottom where the landing gear sits. I Frenched in some barbecue skewers in there as well. So. The landing gear itself is going to be something that, uh, you know, will be able to take a lot of hard landings, that kind of stuff. I imagine um, the way I've seen the Bushwhacker fly on videos and stuff like that, um, it's not going to be, the landings aren't going to be that hard unless you call it a crash. Um, so we're going to kind of see how that works out because I do that a lot. Uh, with the uh, fairings themselves, I do have the wire, normal stock measurements right off the plans as far as how to bend the wire, that kind of stuff. But what I did with the fairings themselves is I actually uh, doubled them up. I, I didn't go with one layer. Um, I did that on the SC5 and it, 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 as soon as I did a little bit of a hard landing, it just bent and like, you know, everything just fell to pieces. Didn't do that. I did double them up. So I ended up beveling the front edge, making like a, a wings leading edge right there. So it has that aerodynamic ability plus the uh, structure as far as having that fold in there with the glue. Uh, you double them up, so you end up getting uh, a glue patch on the inside, on the bottom of the fuse. You get an 
you know, a line of glue sitting on the side of the fuse. So it completely wraps around those skewers that I've, you know, uh, Frenched in there as well. And then on the back, uh, I did put a barbecue skewer in here as well, just to kind of hold that stability from any, you know, backward sort of leverage that wants to happen usually when you're landing that kind of stuff and I actually did cut down the fairing a little bit in the original plans I'll kind of turn this so you can see it in the original plans they actually had about a half inch of foam before that skewer would meet up right there I actually brought that in I didn't I didn't cut that half inch out of here I wanted to keep even a bit more of a sharper angle, but I took away that half inch of foam that's right here on the end, just so that barbecue skewer that's actually in there right now, you can see it riding along right in there, that barbecue skewer will actually meet the wire right there. So it eliminates that much room for failure as far as the foam, the structure of the foam, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where I wanted to go with the bushwhacker, make it strong, uh, still keep it light, but uh, you know, make it, very versatile and durable as well. I mean, uh, like I said, it's going to be training me and I could possibly get some friends into the flight as flight hobby as well, just by using this plane. It's a nice slow flyer. I'll put a 10, four five prop on it. I actually ordered four of those. I'm waiting for those in the mail as well. Um, so I ended up, I ended up doing that. I did end up building the bushwhacker tires. Um, I am uh, going to, you know, go ahead and, uh, use these as well. I also built up uh, some skis to play with. So I'm in Canada, we've got snow, it's part of our thing. It's about as common as maple syrup and beavers. So uh, we're gonna kind of go along with the skis as well. Uh, they do kind of look, look a little small on the plane, but it's gonna take some ground testing, taxiing, that kind of stuff to kind of play around with those as well. So that's, uh, that's the bushwhacker. That's kind of where that's going right now. Um, what I'm also gonna be talking about is what's coming up next. Um, I am out of a Warbird. I do have the Sportster, you see that guy right up there. I got the wing, I got the Bushwhacker, that's my high wing plane. I, I, I'm, I'm out of a Warbird. The last Warbird that I had was the P40 that lasted for about a minute and a half, two minutes in the air. I did put a lot of work into it and uh, lost a signal, you know, crashed that down. Uh, there's a video on that as well on my YouTube channel. But uh, I'm, what, what's next? Uh, what, what am I gonna go on to next? Another Warbird. Um, I'm gonna step away from the basic folded um, design of the Warbirds. Um, I was thinking about the MiG-3. Um, it's got a bit more of a form thing to it. The P-40 was something that I was playing around with the form foam board, that kind of stuff. But I'm going to go straight into a Master Series. Um, I do have some cold cold weather coming up. Um, I'm going to be you know, doing a lot more garage time, a lot more building time as opposed to flying time. Hopefully that's not the case, but uh, I'm going to go into a Master Series and the Master Series that I'm going to do that I've been doing a lot of research on is the P-47. Uh, the P-47 is uh, something that is a plane that um, I, I, I really like the design of it. Don't get me wrong. Everybody loves the Corsair. I love the Corsair. It's a great looking plane. Um, dynamically, it's, um, you know, it has a lot of features to it that uh, make it really, really good flyer, that kind of stuff. That's not really what I'm looking for. I, I, of course, I do want a good flyer, but uh, the P-47 is something different that I haven't seen a lot of people do yet. Um, that was kind of what attracted me to the Bushwhacker too, is not a lot of people are doing it at this point in time. Maybe, I don't know, because it's a five or six year old design. Uh, even the thread that I'm posting on and stuff like that, it was started when the Bushwhacker first came out. The last post on it was like four years ago or something like that. So nobody was really playing around with the Bushwhacker. And you know, what I've found is that when people start out in the Master Series, maybe because the Corsair was the first um, Master Series plane to come out, Everybody's doing the Corsair, and, and, and don't get me wrong, it looks great, I love it. It's, it, it, it's a great looking plane, I, I, and even as a scale Warbird, when it first came out, beautiful plane, beautiful flyer. Um, it was meant for like uh, the carrier decks of aircraft carriers, like takeoff landing, great plane. But uh, P-47, not really many people are doing it. I even looked it up on, on YouTube, and I only found like three or four videos of people actually who have built it since it's been released, and have flown it and uh, you look at the Corsair and there's like a hundred videos out there on the, on, on the Corsair. So this is something that I kind of wanted to play around with. Uh, the P-47, historically, it is, uh, as far as World War II goes, it didn't really come out until the end of World War II, the last, you know, four or five months of World War II, but it really uh, crossed the T's and dotted the I's for the Allies, if you ask, and, you know, if you ask anybody. It was really the plane that ended the war. Um, it's a super solid plane. Uh, they did uh, call it, uh, historically, the pilots that flew them, 
call it the tank of the air. Um, it really took a lot of hits. Like some guys would, you know, take a hundred rounds in, in the wing in the fuselage before they even realized they were being fired upon. And uh, the plane itself actually had uh, a, a maximum horsepower being that it was supercharged at around, uh, supercharged or turbocharged, I'm not really, I think it was supercharged, um, being at around 2,400 horsepower, like an amazing, sizable, just a monster, a, a fighter plane. And it, uh, that's kind of what got me appealed to it. And even in, even watching the build video and the final result and uh, comparing it side by side to some of the other FT Warbirds, like the Spitfire, the Mustang, it's a huge plane. And uh, what they're calling for on the uh, plans and stuff like that, as far as the build goes, it will run off a of CPAC. They, they put the radial on it in the, in the build, but they're saying, oh, it'll, find, it, it'll fly fine on a 3S, but you're going to want a 4S. Well, that's, a 12, or that's an 1100 kV motor, I believe. Um, the radial, it could be a 1200, I'm not too sure. But um, the motor that I'm going to be using on it is going to be the same one that I'm, you know, that you've seen on the Spear that I use in the Sportster. I'm going to be using it on the Bushwhacker. Uh, it's the same motor. It's about 50% larger than the radial C pack. So even on a 3S, I'm thinking it's, it's still going to have, you know, some, it's still going to fly pretty reasonably well. Um, what I, what I do want to do with it is, um, I noticed with uh, most of the um, most of the builds by the Overstreets, and, and I'm not bashing them. I mean, this is this. I love the designs by the Overstreets. The the smooth panels, um, the way the foam molds, molds together, how it's like an inner skeleton with an outer skin, as opposed to it being like an exoskeleton folded together fuse. All that stuff is great. I like I like doubling up on the uh, on the horizontal stabilizer. All that kind of stuff. Um, the one thing that I am going to do though, is I'm going to do a folded wing design on it. Basically, um, the two, the, the bottom half and the top panels of the wing being sandwiched together and then just kind of glued along the edges and the tips and stuff like that. Not really a big fan of it. Um, it looks great. I mean, if I was, if I was to build the plane and hang it on the wall, yeah, I mean, it looks awesome in the fact that the plane can hang there. You paint it. It looks like a great model. That's fine. I'm a flyer and I tend to crash a lot. And if I'm just doing a little bit of a hard belly landing and a twig ends up going through the leading edge of my wing, I don't, it's not something that I want to fix, right? If, if I know there's a better way of doing it. So um, in watching the build video, I've, I've watched it a couple times now. It's, a, it's about a four and a half hour video and I've watched it like a couple times now. And looking at the uh, two wing panels, um, the top and bottom, if you put them together at the leading edge, there is a uh, straight, um, straight line on the, on the leading edge. There's a good easy way once you cut out the plans, put those two leading edges together, tape them together, and then do a folded wing design. I've done this speed wing in a, uh, in a design like that before. I did that with the, uh, the Johnny Cash, the J Cash, the Scout that I built. Uh, that was a speed wing that I did on there. And same thing with the P40 is I just put the two panels together, fold them up, worked out really well. And uh, it works out to be just as strong as any other of the FT designs as far as the folds go, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what I'm going to go with. Um, I do want an opinion on uh, anybody that may have built the P47 or uh, are looking to or anybody that has experience with this. But uh, my thing is, um, my question would be, do I use landing gear or not? Um, I did notice in some of the videos or in the videos that I was playing around with that I did see on YouTube um, is that uh, with the landing gear on, going into takeoff, uh, kind of like the Cub, um, the plane tend to seem a bit nose heavy on the wheels. So you, you power up a little bit and it just wants to pitch forward kind of idea. And there was a lot of guys that were hand launching the uh, P47 just for this reason, right? Landings were fine. Um, people are able, if they're able to flare enough, that kind of stuff, landings were fine. They're able to keep, you know, keep, keep the nose up kind of idea, but takeoffs, takeoffs are something that, um, you know, I got to work on myself and I don't need a plane that's, um, you know, gonna, you know, uh, inhibit any sort of like, um, stuff like that. I mean, I do have other planes that I can play around with like the Sportster itself. It has landing gear. I have landed that a few times. Um, uh, three times in a row actually and they were super smooth landing super easy. It is a heavier plane kind of idea There's a lot more foam that's evolved than uh, just a just a regular bird With the p47 it's probably gonna take about seven or eight sheets I'm not too sure exactly but seven or eight sheets of foam just to kind of you know build this plane to get it to where um, You know, it's it's actually a finished product 
Um, a lot of other warbirds are more like a four or five sheet range. Um, the Sportster itself, I did add a lot of, uh, you, you know, reinforcements. That's my pickup truck, basically, of the skies. What I'm looking at is uh, that um, landing gear. Yes or no? Should I or shouldn't I? Not too sure. Um, I know that if I put landing gear in it, I'm going to have to do some paint stick reinforcement in the bottom panel of the wing, that kind of stuff. But other than that, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Uh, but write it down in the comments below. Tell me, tell me what you think. Um, I'm not too sure about it, so uh, give me your opinion. I'm really looking forward to seeing your guys' response on that. So, given that, uh, my next part that I'm going to go into is going to be my parts list, my witch list, uh, what I'm what I'm looking to do in the future, that kind of stuff. So, um, what I do have in the mail coming in uh, is going to be the servos. Uh, I'm getting a two five pack um, of servos, uh, the nine gram ones. I'm out of servos, so I got to play around with those. I have burnt up a couple, stripped a couple, pulled some wires out of a couple. I've kind of cobbled some together to kind of make things work, but. Uh, as far as servos go, I need more servos. So I got those coming in. I got extensions coming in. Um, kind of a funny story on that one as well. Uh, as far as um, my CPAC motor, I do want to get new shafts for it. Um, maybe just for that one motor. Um, what the one thing that I'm kind of you know wishing upon that I'm going to uh, look into getting into the future is going to be a twin pack. Um, can maybe get the CPAC twin radial ed edition. Um, I definitely want to get into uh, twin prop planes. Um, I really like the sea duck. I, I like the, uh, the idea of the guinea pig, that kind of stuff. And uh, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, maybe even the cruiser at some point in time. And if I want to really get into like, you know, speed planes, I kind of want to, you know, have that twin pack as opposed to a single engine sort of idea. Um, being that I'm looking at, you know, planes that go fast and stuff like that, kind of going along with Ben Harbor sort of thing with his red line. Um, I also want to get a V-tail mixer. So I want to be able to play around with V-tails, that kind of stuff, just kind of streamline things down. Um, another thing that I want to be looking at too is a EDF. Um, EDFs are something that I haven't played around with yet, haven't built around them, haven't flown them or anything like that. So I want to kind of play around with that. There's a vegan group build that's going on in the forums that I kind of want to be a part of, but I don't have an EDF to uh, play around in that direction. But uh, given that, um, that's kind of what my wish list is. That's kind of where I'm going. Um, minis. I kind of played around with the minis in the beginning just because as far as collateral damage and in, in crashing and stuff like that, when you're a beginner pilot, it kind of makes sense. Um, you're not you're not repairing as much every time you crash. Most of the times, you know, a crash is pretty light with a mini anyway. They're a pretty, you know, small plane. And given the structure of foam and stuff like that, you can pretty much, you, you know, kind of like bend wing tips back into place and just toss it back up and you're, you're good to go, right? So I'm not really playing around with the minis so much. I want to keep to more standard size planes. But uh, given that, uh, I'm not really going to play around with the minis very much. But I do want to get that twin pack. I definitely want to get an EDF. I want to get a V-tail mixer. Um, and then, uh, you know, whatever, whatever stuff else I can get with... Uh, you know, any sort of standard size, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where I'm going to go with it. Hopefully over the winter here, I can kind of, you know, get a bit of a, a, a gift basket together for myself as far as, you know, parts, um, you know, motors, batteries, that kind of stuff, right? So uh, that's kind of pretty much it. In conclusion, um, we'll talk a little bit about my uh, quick tips. I haven't posted on quick tips for so long now. Um, again, the whole, um, you know, building side of things has been slowing down. Um, I do want to get back into the quick tips thing. Um, I, I do, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to do one here right away. I'm going to do one on min waxing your plane. Uh, even though I've, you know, in the forums, I've probably, you know, there's probably a half a dozen times where somebody's asked me, oh, how do you min wax yours? Your planes look so great. How do you min, you know, what are you doing to prep your plane? That kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm talking about min wax and that kind of stuff. And uh, even, even the seasoned pros, the guys that have, you know, been doing this, this hobby for five plus years. Um, are, are still kind of confused about it. So I just want to throw out a video on the min waxing side of stuff. Um, just kind of give, you know, give people a quick reference that they can go to. Of course, it's all going to be on my YouTube channel. You can easily access it there. Um, if you go into the quick tips um, forums, uh, you'll find uh, that it's a mishmash of not only the quick tips, but there's a lot of opinion suggestions and stuff like that in there. So there's going to be a lot of scrolling through pages to find what you're looking for. If you go to my YouTube channel, in the playlist section, there's quick tips right in there. All the videos are there. 
no rice in the burrito kind of thing, what you're going to find is that, um, you know, it's, it's all right there for you to choose from. So that's something that uh, you guys can look forward to as far as the Minwax side of stuff. Quick tips. Also, um, I'm going to do one possibly on foaming for forming foam board for curves, that kind of stuff. Uh, I have a new idea that I'm going to play around with as far as, um, if you remember my iron edges one, um, iron, hot iron works great for your iron edges and stuff like that. Um, if some people have, you know, gone on there and said, you know, kaboom, hey, wow, how, how come I haven't seen this before? Haven't I, how come I haven't tried this before? Uh, all you gotta do is just, you know, give it a shot on a scrap piece of foam board, use a $5 traveling iron or, you know, whatever, you don't have to go out and buy, you know, a fancy modeling iron or anything like that. Um, just go with, uh, go with a, you know, regular household iron, that's what I use, um, and it uh, works out really great. But as far as foaming, forming a foam board, for like curves, master series, any sort of like, uh, you know, uh, wings or whatever you want to play with, fuselage, that kind of stuff. Uh, I have an idea that I'm going to kind of play around with here and it might, uh, it's something that I got to experiment with yet, but uh, I think it might work. And if it does work, I'm going to show you guys how it ends up, you're able to, you know, foam your foam board without, you know, going at the edge of your tail and working it out. Sometimes that might work better. I'm not too sure exactly how uh, this new system is going to work, but um, I'm thinking it's actually going to make the panel not only form nice, but also stronger as well. So I'm kind of looking at that as well. Uh, again, if you guys have anything that you guys want to see me do a quick tip vid on, please comments, suggestions, ideas, you know, all that kind of stuff below the video, do it in the forums if you're on the forums and uh, you know, anything else um, you want to see, just make sure you let me know and uh, like and subscribe you know, recommend it to a friend, that kind of stuff. Um, the only way that um, I'm going to be able to, uh, you know, keep doing this and be motivated to do this is to see more subscribers. Kind of a funny thing. Um, I was sitting at 19 subscribers. Doesn't seem like much. That's great. I'm just starting it out. But I was sitting at 19 subscribers for the longest time. And I, I, I've been in the forums lately. And I think about a half a dozen times I've, uh, you know, been promoting my channel. Hey, look, you're asking me these questions. All these answers are on my YouTube channel. Go check out my link, links in my signature, like check it out. Like go to the channel, like and subscribe, you know, that kind of stuff. And you really got to push to promote that kind of thing. Please like, subscribe, recommend, get my videos exposure, that kind of stuff. And that way, you know, it's going to motivate me to keep, keep kind of doing this stuff. Actually, this is kind of where this is coming from. Instead of just doing flight videos, instead of just doing quick tips videos, I want to give you guys a variety of stuff that I'm looking at and, you know, uh, things that I'm doing kind of, you know, give you guys an idea of, you know, what's really going on as far as, you know, the bench, the build shop, you know, what I'm, what I'm thinking, kind of give you guys some ideas, inspire you guys to get, you know, join up in these group builds and that kind of stuff as well. Anyway, uh, that's all I got. Again, like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for showing up. Adios.